You all know the game? Where the money comes from? <coughs> Register your snowmobile. Ten dollars goes to DMV. I know you all know. We'll talk about that. Thirty-five dollars comes into the fund. Ninety dollars if you're not a club member. It helps us to do these functions through these partnerships to this much of a system. It's a little less than that now, and I'll explain that in a minute. And hopefully to this end, with an economics bent to it. Who's involved? You all know. 52 local government sponsors, 46 counties, 47. 46, 46 counties, some towns. This county is going to participate in the program. County is your friend. Don't lose them. You don't want to go to a town situation. And those that you are in a town situation in a couple counties, I am working on that to try and get this a little better organized. So it's not as troublesome. Over 200 of you in the clubs. Here's a telling story. Here's your registration since 1991. I get accused of trying to put too many negatives if I ask questions. People think that I'm questioning everything and that I'm putting a negative spin on it. I'm not. I think we've leveled off. I hope we've leveled off. My job is to get back to here. What happened to these people? Where'd they go? How can we make it better? How can we get them back in here again? There's a lot of factors that play into this. A lot of them. We can probably sit here and, and go round and round for an hour on the reasons why. The same time your registrations have been going down, your trail mileage has been going up. Pie gets smaller, pieces have to get bigger. It gets harder and harder to make it fit. There's your registrations, that's where they're coming from. Look at down here. There's no snow, there's no trails. Look at the amount of registration you got in the no snow area. Yeah, you got a lot more up in here. No way of saying as much about it. These people contribute a heck of a lot too to your trail system. What I hear most of them are, is they're contributing to those maintenance, trail maintenance clubs, and they are members of clubs. I have met with several of them. This is the other thing that's very interesting. We're about ready to embark on another study. This, was, this comes out of 2003 from the Park study. I have met uh, with Syracuse University, Cornell University, Along with DEC, because of the Adirondacks issue, they have to do a utilization study on the Adirondacks as part of the, the snowmobile plan that's there. I'm going to piggyback onto that, if at all possible, to try, and along with parks, doing another survey like we did before. Start with the high snow areas here and down here. Given the riding patterns that are, that are showing up and occurring, those are your first economic impacts. A little later, I'll show you the bigger impact that we have other than those high snow areas. Here's where your current registrations are for this year. Originals, those are new sleds. You all buying that many new sleds? You got more money than I thought you had. <laughs> the other ones are renewals. You know, the registration always stays with the sled forever and ever and ever until it dies. Uh, look at this out-of-state registration that's here. We have from Alabama, Louisiana, people register sleds. Amazing. I think they have camps and they're former residents and they're snowbirds. And they come back and forth and they keep a sled up here someplace. Uh, anybody know who these people are? Would you please have them come forward? <laughs> <laughs> this is a DMV quirk, I think, is what it is. It's, it's registrations that may have a county missing or some piece of information missing on there, uh, but they have to figure in the mix 
come up to make the tokens work here. That's not bad. That's but, not bad. It's still down. I'd love to see it on the plus side, and that's what I, my goal is, to try and get it back onto the plus side. That we're not, we're not losing. Yes, sir. That doesn't necessarily mean we have less money, right? Because you could have people that, that is correct. didn't join. And we'll hit the money side of that. Okay. Absolutely. I'll show, I'll show you that. Sorry. This is the money. This is the first part of the process of the money. I have to put together a budget in September. And it's based on the number of registrations, <coughs> the dollars I have to use. It's the only way I can do it. This is 06, 07. You'll see that was the first year of the crisis when they weren't sure. All of a sudden, people weren't registering sleds anymore until very late in the season. And they didn't know whether or not they were going to have them. This is the biggest question I hear. Well, where did the 48,000 registered sleds go? The money came in, came into the account. It's there, it was used, it's available. Almost. You know the story. I'll get to it. <laughs> September, your registrations come out. Look at the number that are registered. Here. It starts snowing really about here. Honey, where's that registration at? I got a registered sled. We got to go slow and home. Yeah, we got it. All of a sudden, everybody's registering in here. It makes it harder and harder to have the funds available to get them out earlier and earlier. It's a quirk, but it's something we, we're, by fate, we're starting to work on. Ends up, this is where we're at. Remember the figure? Is that figure right there? There are other things that uh, they kind of neglected to tell me that I had to do as part of the snowmobile program. The 1989 plan needs to be updated. Sleds are bigger, faster, quicker. The trail system is more than doubled from what it was that point. We'll take a look at that. Not a high priority right now. Not at all. Uh, we do accident reporting and record keeping on that. In the past it wasn't real good. It was a lot of stuff thrown in boxes. Uh, we are getting a handle on that. And I'll show you some figures on this. We do advise the agency on, on these and as well as other agencies. And I am working with federal agencies, DEC. I did just get, for those of you from the Adirondacks, why I did, I don't know, but I offered. Uh, I'm part of the UMP process now. I never had anybody from snowmobiling community on the funding side that actually had a say in trail development within the blue line. So I'm now going to start getting those plans to look at them also. Uh, and of course, obviously, promote snowmobiling. How many instructors are in here? Safety program instructors. What's the one thing you would like to see changed in that program? Shorten it up. Do you know that under the law, you have, you have shortened the program up on your own? Under the law, it's 10 hours. We have to change the law to get it down to eight hours. I hear people that say they want to get it to six hours. Here's the biggest thing I see that, one, that I need to do to this program. I took the safety course this year, unbeknownst to the instructors, I walked in cold on one. Just to see the reaction of the kids, the instruction, take the book, try to learn, figure it out. Excuse me. It was so boring. And I could see it in the kids' faces. The instructors did a masterful job trying to keep them on focus where they needed to go. One of the ideas that we've had, and again, this is down the road, but it's something I think we'd like to strive for. I've been talking to gamers. We're going to try and videotape sections of the trail under varying conditions, bright sunlight at night in a snowstorm, ice conditions, groomed, ungroomed, through the woods, on an open field. Do these videos, put them together, build me a set of handlebars with a brake and a set of gas. 